Hi, welcome to the next video lecture for Introduction to Machine Learning. We are still talking about random forests and now we want to talk about proximities derived from random forests. Okay, so random forest proximities are very useful. They are a measure of similarity <clears throat> of different observations that we can derive from a random forest. <clears throat> and we can compute this for every pair of observations. Yeah, so proximity means how close to each other are they. Um, and the definition of a random forest proximity is fairly easy. It's simply we count how many times two observations, xi and xj, end up in the same terminal node of the same tree in a random forest yeah? and we divide that by the number of trees in a random forest that's it we just count how often these two observations end up in the same leaf um, <clears throat> we write that as prox x i x j so that's like an inverse distance you could say mm -hmm. and that gives us a similarity measure um, and it gives us a fairly special similarity measure because this is a similarity measure in terms of basically how similar these observations are for classifying or predicting a certain um, thing. Yeah. Um, if we were to write out the proximities of all the observations, we would get a symmetric n by n matrix because obviously the proximity of xj to xi is the same as the proximity of xi to xj. And we're just counting how often they end up in the same node. The directions don't matter. So actually the symmetric matrix is redundant. We only need the upper or the lower half of that one. Um, okay. Right, that's the algorithm. Mm, really nothing new to say here. That's all part of the definition already. Once we've trained the random forest, um, we run all of the training data through each tree, both the in-back and out-of-back samples. And we just note down how many times two observations end up in the same terminal node. Um, and we add that up, we count that, and then we divide that by the number of trees to end up with something that's independent of the ensemble size. Yeah, and that we can use that as basically uh, a measure of similarity or inverse distances. Um, why is this useful? Well, first of all, we can use these random forest proximities to get a fairly good imputation mechanism going for missing data. So if we have missing data, we want to replace them with suitable values. What's a suitable value? Well, for example, we can replace them by, um, or we can, we can run the following algorithm. We have some feature vector. We replace all the missing entries in the feature vector just by the median of the non-missing values. Okay, so that's a very, very rough guess. Then we run that observation through our random forest. We get the proximities. And then we replace the missing values in that observation by a weighted average of um, the non-missing feature vectors, feature values, sorry. But we do the average so that those observations which have a high random forest proximity to the, in, to the observation that we're trying to impute for, those observations that are close, they get a much higher weight in this average. Yeah? Um, and we can iterate that step two and th step three a couple of times. Yeah? So we start out with a very rough guess for the missing values. We look, okay, which observations are kind of similar to what we are seeing here. And we, then we update our estimate of uh, these missing feature va values. And then we do it again. So that, you know, eventually this will maybe even converge. Yeah. Um, but in any case, we can iterate steps two and three a couple of times to get um, better values. Okay. 
Proximities can also be useful for locating outliers. So an outlier, what's an outlier? It's an observation that is far away from all the others. Yeah. So an untypical observation. So what that means is that typically, well, that will be an observation that isn't very close to any of the other ones. So it has small proximities to all other observations. Yeah, and we can measure that outlyingness for each observation and uh, use that to identify um, feature vectors that are very untypical. So do basically uh, a post-processing of our model and, and look at um, observations that maybe are really untypical or weird. And actually that idea that outliers will tend to be in leaves, uh, will, will tend to have few, so to say, leaf memberships in common with others, that's actually an idea that's also used for random forests that are explicitly designed for outlier detection. They're called isolation forests. Look that up if that is something that interests you. Okay. Um, similarly, I, we can use it to identify mislabeled data, these random forest proximities. Yeah, because, um, again, if something is an outlier in terms of their proximity values, maybe something is wrong there. Yeah, so we can use that to kind of figure out, okay, huh, this observation might be mislabeled or something. Um, and the final um, application of these proximities is that we can try to visualize um, how the forest arrives at its... Um, um, how the forest arrives at its predictions, so to say, in the sense that we can take the inverse proximity, so one minus the proximities, because proximities are always between zero and one, um, and we think of that as distances. Yeah? Um, and if we have a matrix of distances in some high dimensional space, because obviously that feature space that we use for the constructing random forest typically is fairly high dimensional, we can try to project these distances into a lower dimensional space. So, or rather, find a configuration of points in a lower dimensional space that has similar distances amongst them as implied by the proximity matrix. Um, that's a technique called metric multidimensional scaling. Yeah, that idea that you given that you know distances between objects in a high dimensional space, you try to find a configuration of points in lower dimensional space that you can actually look at where these distances are preserved. Again, called metric multidimensional scaling. Um, how that works in detail doesn't have to concern us here, but it allows you to do very, very nice visualization. So this is an example for the iconic MNIST data set, so it's a handwritten digit classification task. We have 10 digits from 0 to 9. Um, and here you have a multidimensional scaling of, well, um, the predicted, the, 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 sorry, the training data for this MNIST data set, yeah, split up into classes. And you can see how these classes are fairly well separated, but also that some of them overlap. So, for example, you can see that this um, the ones, yeah, they have they they sometimes end up depending on how you write a one, yeah, very close to seven, yeah. So that makes sense. Some some ones look like sevens. Some ones seem to be looking like what is that? Like eights, yeah, even. Um, some ones even tend to look like fives, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So you can see how this is spread out um, basically in a 2D plane, even though the input data here are actually 28 by 28 pixel grayscale images. So it's a fairly high dimensional feature space. Well, 28 squared, so almost 900 features. But here we can see there is a nice structure, even if we project these um, random forest proximities down into a two-dimensional space. All right. Um, okay, that's it for proximities.
there's a very nice exercise in your code demos that's also about proximity so i recommend you all work on that with some dedication